I always have a um a superstition about my um zooms. Always. I always have to double and triple check that they go live, which is a pain in the ass. Let's see. We're um I know you're in uh you're not in San Fran, are you? No, I'm in um that, Southern California. Yeah, I was thinking that you're way down south. What's the story with the Red Bridge? It's just uh, once you train me up and I have a bunch of money, I'm going to get a mansion here. That's just how You're going to get a what? I'm going to get a mansion here once you train me up and, you know, once you get... <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Oh, man, no, that's how it look. Hey, guys, if you're hearing this and if you can see us, do, 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 let us know. Let us know that you can hear us. Let us know that you can see us. Let us know that everything is good to go. Do, 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 do. I am... Um... Okay, everyone can hear and see. Josh Beaton, what's going on, buddy? How have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. How are things? So over the next 20 minutes, because I know Adam is busy. He's making too many sales. So time is valuable for Adam. I want him to just kind of briefly break down, you know, what he's doing inside, what's going on with him, where he comes from, what he sells, and, um, you know, what's he putting in, in action that ultimately is pushing him on. So let's get into it, buddy. Um, Let's give the world an understanding of who you are, where you're from, and what you sell, if we can. Well, yeah, firstly, sure thank you. Firstly, thank you for coming on, because I know you're busy, so I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah no problem, man. Um, yeah, so I'm from California, and I sell like real estate coaching, just basically people yeah. you know, scaling up your business or getting you from like a nine to five to becoming a full-time real estate investor. So basically, people that want to and make more money, have more time with their children, just have a business that provides them that freedom. Okay. What would be the kind of common objections in that niche? I know, but you can tell me. <laughs> uh, either like, niche. yeah, I mean, it's it's like, it's B2C and somewhat like, you know, people that are already like investing in real estate. So a B2C objection would be like, oh, I don't have the money for this. Or I need to think about it or I need to uh, you know, pray on it talk to my spouse, you know, just the typical objection it's that you'd true. be getting with yeah. any offer that's B2C, right? And then for someone that's already like a seasoned investor, it's more like, hey, like if I spend this money, like how much of an ROI will I be getting? Like, is it worth spending this money or can I spend this money elsewhere to get a higher ROI? Okay. Yeah. Before you came into the objection box, if I gave you 10 calls like that, how many objections would you get based on what you just gone through? How many objections would I get? Yeah. based off of 10 calls like yeah uh, uh i mean i'm sure like eight out of ten of them i would at least get like some sort of objection yeah yeah now you were making okay money before you came in which is which is always good yeah. how many out of those eight would you have been able to overcome would you feel <sighs> maybe like one or two Shit. yeah and it would be like more of it, it wouldn't even be me overcoming it it'd just be more of me leaning on like the the marketing or like the influencer since we do have like pretty good marketing and a pretty good yeah. like influencer and he's pretty well known it would just be meaning more on him rather than actually me overcoming the objection itself yeah sure. yeah why did you join the objection box yeah so um a little bit of background about me, like I've always kind of been like that shy, passive Asian kid at the back of the class, scared to raise their hand, right? <laughs> well, before you um, came on, what did you say to me? Um, you said to me, I'm nervous, you know? Yeah. And you said, don't ask me any hard questions. I don't want to be on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of the way it translated into like how I sold too. So I've always been that kind of like no pressure, like you know, just kind of hands off approach. And I realized that in order to like get to where I want to go, I can't be like that anymore. Like I needed to change. I need to be more direct and like head on with the objections. I feel like I'm pretty good at, you know, having them open up on the conversation, being a good listener. But at the end of the day, once it came to the objections, I would just kind of freeze up. 
Yeah. Because I didn't know how to be like that direct person. Yeah. Right. And it's hard because like if you're passive, you're not going to do well in sales. Like the dash was yeah. you like you will find a unicorn now and again and like you'll make good money, but they won't last because the next guy that comes in, if you're closing at 22 percent, the next guy that comes in closes at 24 and a half percent, you're gone because that two and a half percent in the business is massive. So you're absolutely spot on in terms of that passiveness is not necessarily going to get you where you want to go, guys. And that's just the reality. That's just the fact. It's not coming from me because I'm extremely the other side, as you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, where you're not in any way, shape or form. You know, I'm not Asian, as you can probably see. And I'm not the guy at the back of the class with his head down, just doing the work, you know, so that's really important. Anyway, back to the why, uh, why I asked you, what, why did you you know, join. Yes, you wanted to make more money. That's fucking clear and obvious. Everyone wants to make money in sales. That's easy. But like, yes, you are passive. But like, really, why did you actually join? I feel like the other programs that I did join to try to improve my sales skills, like didn't really uh, tackle the objections head on. It was just more about like how to prevent the objections, which is great. But I didn't have a specific structured process in place that actually tackled the objections head on. And I yeah. feel like that was the missing piece of the puzzle to kind of get to the next level for myself. Can I be an asshole and ask you whose training you've done? Yeah, uh, I've done a lot of different trainings. I've done um, like NEPQ with Jeremy Miner. I've yeah. done uh, this long time ago. It's like Dan Locke. Ah, you joined Dan Locke <laughs> because he's Asian. That's why you joined Dan <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a long time ago. Um, Can I I've that? done like... Races? Hopefully it's, nah, it's okay. We're, we're, we embrace the racism here. It's okay. No, I'm just kidding. But um, a lot of stereotypes are true, just as a heads up, guys. Um, but yeah, Dan Locke, um, I have done a little bit of Cole Gordon, yeah, yeah. but I feel like, yeah, he is very direct, but in my opinion, I feel like it kind of like bullies people into the sale in a way, um, which I didn't like, right? Uh, and I knew that you are one of uh, Jeremy's or NEPQ's like top coaches. Yeah. And I did, you know, review some of your calls. And I just liked the way that you were very direct and you were very stern with people while uplifting them at the same time. Like you weren't bullying people into a sale. Yeah. And that's especially when it comes from your personality, you're like, you just, you actually at the scale of who you are in here, which is your internal person. You just can't do that. You just can't yeah. apply that amount of pressure because it just won't sit right with you. You just won't be able to deliver it in a way that ultimately bullies people into making the decision. And plus, it's just the wrong way to go about making sales and helping people, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, which is just, it is what it is. Why do you feel, I'm going to ask you another difficult question. Why did you, why do you feel the objection box has delivered as quickly as it's it has delivered compared to everything and everyone else. That's probably, you know, apples and oranges, I suppose. But what do you think is the key? Or what has I been? think the I think the way you framed everything and kind of structure everything out is since you do things a little bit uh, reverse rather than start at the beginning of the call and then you walk them through towards the end, you yeah. start with what's really important, the objections. And that's what's going to make you the most money. Like you've taught you you've practice that part first in the very beginning so you do the reverse mm. and i think focusing on the objections first overcoming the objections and overcoming the person at the end of the day is going to get you paid way more than trying to just you know do stuff like oh like how's it going like you know just those openers that like try to it's super cheesy like super, super cheesy weird. sales stuff and openers um i think the main thing is just attacking the objections head on because at the end of the day that's what's going to get you paid Right. If you don't know how to overcome the objections, when you do come across it, you freeze up, you're done. Finito. Yeah. Yeah. Finito. And the problem that I see in large um, large coaching programs, and don't get me wrong, look, everybody knows my story. Everybody knows where I've come from. I'm massive friend with all those guys, massive respect for Cole, Jeremy. Some people may not even believe that, but I do. Uh, very good friends with Eli. Lots of these great people. They're great salespeople absolutely stellar people um but everyone has different ways of doing things you know and everyone has different processes and structures and this is what i always tell people you should find people that align with you you should find people that align with where you want to go and you should find people aligned with 
have they actually coached it and you know developed a large amount of people that are similar to me? Because if you do that, you will find something that will have a fit, you know, and that's the key. With the objections, because um, I think they're really important. What was your biggest objection? Like the hardest one that you couldn't overcome? Probably the fear. Yeah. yeah, that's usually the hardest one because it's like not even, they have the money, they just scared to spend it. Mm. So you need to be that person that can pour into them, you know, put your arm around their shoulder and just uplift them as a person, right? And I think that was the main one I needed help with. And yeah. you're able to give me so many like, it's in essence it's simple but it's just so powerful the technique right like the the bridge analogy or the skydiving analogy or just you know driving a car without the instructor there's like so many different analogies and frameworks that you've you know taught me that was able to help me overcome that specific objection and learn not just like what to say essentially but the reason why i'm saying things to begin yeah. with and that's, and that's the thing important, important. I think that's really, really important. I think that's re like one of the most important things you've said. I can give you words and I can give you templates. But if you don't know how to fucking deliver it and you don't know actually how it actually works and you don't know how to actually put it on a plate, it all just goes top level and it all just goes over the person's head. You have to be able to connect with a person on a personal manner, but also connect with a person where you actually feel and actually empower them to make a better decision. And I think that's really, really important, you know, because everybody wants to give you theory. There's an endless cycle of sales training and sales education and sales everything. But you can fucking beat your head around the wall doing A, B, C, D, E programs, all the programs under the sun. But if you don't know how to actually deliver it and you don't know how to actually put it into practice and you don't have someone who's sitting with you and making sure that you understand how it works and why it works, then it's all just a load of words, you know? And that's important for us because I think I counted it the other day. I think we do 13, 14 sessions of live coaching a week, which is massive. And I know you haven't been on them all, which is always really important for me. Yeah, but that amount of access to coaches, that amount of, and it's not just like you get on a call and this is important too, and you're you're sitting there and you're looking at another 70, 90, 150 people staring at you. And then it's like, do you want to role play a fear objection? You're like, hold on a second, buddy. Fear objection is my worst objection. Now you want to, you want to show me and coach me overcoming the fear objection in front of 150 people to do something I'm not able to do already. How much fear is that person going to have now? Yeah. How much anxiety is that sales rep going to have when 150 people staring at him, trying to ask him how to do something that he's not even able to do, and he's just told you he's not able to do it, and now you're going to put him on the spot in front of 150 people? You know? I think so that's, that's something why... that's great about uh, what you do, Bill, because, um, you know, there are a lot of programs out there where they only focus on, like, let me just bring a bunch of people in there. And then you have like these Zoom calls of like 200, 300, 400 people on there, right? So no one gets that like individualized, personalized attention. Uh, and I think that's a good thing for you is because um, you actually give them that personalized attention. Like, you know, all your students. Yeah. You can you have talk to. to them. And have, yeah, you have to. My team actually gave out to me there at the end of last year. They're like, "Hey, because uh, we grow, we gr grow, we grew and grew and grew and grew, uh, even to the stage where we had 128 people in at least at the time." And they were like, "Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing." And I said, "No." They're like, "What do you mean, no?" I don't want to build a business based on like money. I just don't because like it, it's, it's a never ending cycle. I'd rather build a business with great people in it, being able to walk out at the end, having positive things to say and being in a position looking back that they're proud of the journey that they've been on. How many of the companies that people train with, where they're bringing in three, four, five hundred, six hundred people a month. How can you train? How can you develop? How can you get educated in that kind of cycle? 
if you think about it, it just doesn't even make sense. You have a question, where do you go? Who do you ask? Where do, where do you ask? What do you even do? Do you like do you message this person, that person, the other person? It's just chaos. And that's what happens when you build a business based on profits. It's just never gonna work. You know, it's never gonna get you there. What's the big goal for you? Do you want to be in sales long term or what's the plan? Um so it's kind of a unique situation. So um I do a lot of other things on the side that can provide a lifestyle for me where I'm happy, essentially. Okay. Um, but what I want to do is just make a crap ton of money and just keep growing in sales so I can like put it into other stuff. I really love trading. I love investing. I love like, you know, trading crypto options, yeah, yeah. stocks, I'm all gonna, that stuff. I'm going to be a uh, racist here now. I'm going to say, of course you love trading. You're an Asian. You're, you're, yeah. you're Asian. <laughs> <laughs> all you guys love that stuff. Which is good, yeah. and that's you. But you're educated, and that comes down from your culture as well. Yeah, but but at the end of the day, like, um, I love being in sales as well because like you can see yourself growing, and there's no there's no limit essentially. Like you can, yeah. the better you are, it's a direct correlation to how much money you're making. Yeah. So I learned that very quickly, like within the first month of me being in sales, I was like, hold on a second, there's no cap. <laughs> yeah. And people are just like, oh, there's no cap. I'll get to 10k. I was like, 10k. I was like, let's do that a week. Because that's yeah, like I, what you can if do. If I make 10K, I'm not happy. Like <laughs> it's, it's just a standard. Yeah. And that's that that's should what be people your don't standard. Understand. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. There's no cap, but people want to cap themselves. That's the issue. You know, that's the issue where it is. Um, how long have you been in sales actually? I've never asked you that. Yeah. Um, so I've been in sales for about three and a half years now, like maybe two years as a setter. And then a one and a half as like a full time like closer, yeah. So you've been in sales just as long as I have. Yeah, yeah. It is a fast time when you get after it. it. Is it is, it is a fantastic industry, you know, and it's something that can provide you as much as you possibly want, you know. And that's the key. That's where it's going. What do you think? That I, go for. It. Oh, sorry. I, was, I was gonna say something that I wish I had learned like really early on is to get a mentor, like right when you start or like very early on because for me i just try to do things through uh just doing the reps like on the phones like not really know what i was doing i try to like copy other people or like watch youtube videos like try to educate myself but at the end of the day like if you get a mentor early that knows exactly what they're doing like it just expedites that process so much so i wish i could go back in time and just get like someone like you or you know another a coach someone like that knows what they're doing from yeah. the get-go why would you do that because i wouldn't have to like bang my head on the doors or like bang my head like just trying to figure things out on my own and i i for sure could have gotten where i wanted to go way faster and something that i've always been embedded like from previous mentors or just not just in sales but just in general is like man like money is infinite right mm -hmm. the government like freaking prints this stuff <laughs> money is infinite yeah. but what's not infinite is the time Right, I wasted three and a half years trying to figure things out on my own. Like, like that could have saved so much time and energy and effort, like just training with someone that knows what they're doing. Why do you think people do that? Why did you do that? Why that's an interesting angle for this conversation. Why do you think yeah. people waste their time and energy trying to do something that they're not able to do and just they're just relentless at it? Like they're just, I'm just gonna make it work. I'm just gonna make I hear it all the time. Let yeah. me just get three, four, five more sales and then we're going to do it. A big thing in um, your industry, because a good friend of mine, Christian Peter, who we actually are going to plug this, we took him from six, 6K six all the way up to 64K in 12 weeks, his company. Um, his name is Christian Peter. Go chase him out. Go look for him. If you don't believe me, he'll tell you the truth. Uh, we have an interview with him too. Um, he told me this because he sells real estate training to real estate agents. His biggest objection is, let me just get this deal that I have in the pipeline out of the way, and then I'm gonna, I'm then I'm gonna jump in. He's like, if I heard that once, Billy, I've heard it a million times. It just doesn't even logically make sense. Why did you do that? Why did you like bang your head against the wall for fucking months on end? Yeah, I think when I was first starting out, it's just like fear of spending the money. It's like fear that. Would this even work? I've never done this before. 
and just fear ultimately in myself that I couldn't do it. Because you're stepping into like a new realm where you just a lot of uncertainty, right? Yeah. Um, what was the tipping so, point then? The tipping point was I just wasn't happy with where I was. And I knew that I was destined for more and I was, I could do more. Mm. Um, but you weren't I happy at the start either though. So like what, what yeah. was the tipping point that ultimately said, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to overcome my own fears of, because what you're not, you're not, you're not fear of spending the money. Just to clarify this for all of you, you're not, the fear isn't to spend the money. The fear is that you lose the money or that you don't get it a ROI. That's the fear. Yeah. The fear is not spending the money. The fear is that it doesn't come back. That's the fear. It's the fear of losing it and not receiving it again. That's the fear. But ultimately, what allowed you or what was the tipping point that said, look, I got to do this. I can't keep spinning my head. What was that day? What was that call? Well, I started to think about like what my future would look like, like five, 10, like 15 years down the line if I didn't do it, if I didn't make a change. Right. I can't like when I first started, I was making like two, three thousand a month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, like, South, uh, in South California, that doesn't go a whole lot. That's, that's nothing. Like, rent, I'd say you're going to get like a uh, one bedroom in a really ghetto place. Like, <laughs> you can't live there, man. Like, <laughs> especially when you're fucking Asian, too. You'd be like, shit, let's go rob this kid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what was what was the tipping point then? Like what like bring me back to the day that you actually invested in someone's training. Like what yeah. what was going through your head? Yeah, so it this is uh essentially like a more personal story. So um before I got into sales, before I got into anything, I was on route to you know going into like the medical field. Okay. Typical Asian dude, right? Doctor, uh, lawyer, more, engineer, or get to stereotypical by Jesus. Yeah, I'm Christ. telling you, fucking hell. All my Asian brothers will understand. Even like normal people that are not Asian, if you come from very conservative parents, yeah, doctor, sure. lawyer, engineer. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Accountant uh, is another one that they get. To. Yeah. Yep. Anything that's white color for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um, so in in the future, um, I I knew I wanted to have like children. Right. Okay. As I was growing up, um, I realized that my parents were working all the time and like hustling and bustling to provide a life for me and my siblings. Okay. Right? Um, and I remember when I was a kid, the number one thing I'd always remember is like, man, my parents aren't home. Like I'm not able to spend, they're not able to spend time with me. Like I really wish I could hang out with my parents. So I started thinking to my future, it's like when I'm older and I have kids, I don't ever want to put my kids in that situation. Yeah. And this path I was going down where going to make up medical school. Yeah, I'll make a crap ton of money. Doctors make pretty good money. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to ever have time for myself, for my family, for anything. It's a very stressful life. So I started to think to myself, like, what do I have to do in order to get to where I want to go? Which ultimately is to have time for me and myself and my family and for my future. Yeah. Right. And the route I chose was sales. And I knew that I couldn't just do it myself. Like, I needed help. Cause I've been trying to do it myself for like so many months and I, ha I didn't get the results. Yeah. So walk me through that day. What was the first course you bought or mentorship <laughs> or training? Was it Dan Locke? Of course it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to venture too far out of the Asian culture. I got to go to someone that I can <laughs> look back and blame. So on that day, what, what, I don't even know how, what, what, what's the investment in a Dan Locke course these days? Uh, I, back then it was like 2,500 bucks, 2,500 bucks. Okay, cool. Bring yeah. me back to the day that you dropped 2,500 bucks on that call. Was this All right, so, a good guy or bad girl or what? Like talk me through that. Cause that's an interesting thing. I've not actually yeah. ever asked anyone that. Yeah. So, um, it, this is good because like this reinforces that idea. It's like, if you want something bad enough, like it's not a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness, right? Like Correct. you can find the money, money's easy. Um, so I was a broke college kid. I had nothing, mm. like straight up nothing. Um, so, I mean, I did the, the course was 2,500 bucks. So I was like, I can't do that. Like, oh my God, I'm so broke. Like, I don't have a job. I don't have anything. Right. 2,500, three pay is 3,000. So you can do a payment plan. Yeah. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand. Yeah, exactly. So basically I went to ask all my friends and family. I'm like, Hey man, if you love me, if you care about me. You're going to invest in me. 
<laughs> that I literally just like asked a bunch of people for the money and eventually I got the money. I got a thousand bucks. Yeah. Right. So that I put it into the training. So that's why I say like, I always have this mindset. It's like, if someone wants something bad enough, like they're going to find the money, they're going to get it. Like yeah. if they really want it for themselves, that's why we have so much consumer debt. Oh, that's yeah, America, have, yeah. Yeah. We've had many <laughs> conversations about that. Yeah. The other side, right. And you're absolutely spot on. If the need, want, and the desire is there, everything can happen and everything should happen. But you got to be able to feel it in your fucking bones. You got to be able to say, like, I can't move on without this. I've got a couple of guys that are in a position, right? That message me every couple of days, nearly crying down the phone. Because they just can't get into training. They just can't get into family. They can't get into elite. And I'm like, guys, look, I, I massively respect you. But to make it fair for everyone, look, this is just standard of where people are at. I have to protect that standard. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I always have people this way. I got two kids. One of my kids broke their arm. And I needed 10 grand to save the child's arm. Do you think I'm going to find the 10 grand? And that's what it comes down to. And you basically looked at your future and said to yourself, if I don't make this work and I don't find this money, I ain't getting this. And that's the reality, unfortunately. So you went from Dan Lock. Where did you go then? I went from Dan Lock to um, Sales Sniper. It's like a sixty dollar. Yeah, yeah, the closing code we used to run. Yeah, 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 closing yeah, code. Yeah. Good. Um, good. And then I started watching a lot of NEPQ stuff, um, and I realized that uh, Jeremy, he's really good at like not having a ton of pressure, like and being super salesy. Mm -hmm. And just allowing them to have like a normal conversation, allowing them to open up, which I yep. thought very much resonated with my internal person, you know, being that shy Asian kid, right? It did, yeah. Um, so it I was, was able to take that and, you know, get some results from that. When it but, came to push, though, that's the yeah. problem. When it came yeah. to push and it came to actually having a little bit of stern in you, a little bit of steel, a little bit of fucking conviction, a little bit of certainty in what you are and speaking like I'm speaking right now, it ain't there. You ain't yeah. learning it. So, yeah. So you kind of gravitated all the way up and you kind of pushed it on and on and on and on, which is absolutely awesome. And you kept going and you kept pushing and striving and moving. Now you're at about 25K a month, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's the kind of run rate. You started about 12. I think. Yeah. And you used to like 12, 13 or something. Yeah, 12, something 13. Like and then literally one month being working with you, like double. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What, what is the biggest kind of one, two or three things that you feel have really pushed that on? Yes, obviously the objections. Let's knock that out. That's the first thing. What are the other two do you feel that has really pushed it on for you? Um, I think just having the, like the network of other people to like help train you and like give you feedback, like more mm. personalized feedback, not just like a huge group where it's like, you don't really get like that personalized attention. Yeah. Whereas like, with you, like you have so many coaching sessions where I could just hop on, break down what I'm doing step by step, break down like what I need to work on specifically. And at the end of the day, like, you know, from going to going to like zero to 10, that's easy. But like getting above that, you need to like make those like tweaks. Like it's like slight little nuances there that will yeah. get you to like next level higher and higher. Yeah. So I think it was um, the, the community, the network, you know, having that accountability like you're pretty hardcore. It's like, hey, if you don't show up to the call, like we're not even gonna do this. We're gonna kick you out, right? We'll kick you out. We'll refund the money, whatever. Like, <laughs> you, you, you do what you can. It's because you care. Like you want us to get better, right? Whereas other people just like, okay, thanks for the money. Like here's the training. There's no like accountability. There's no hand holding. There's no, like, you know, like you yeah. gotta. And, and that, I think that actually that's that was really important. Um, when I sat. When I sat and thought about the objection box, I actually wrote it out in a piece of paper on pencil. And I said to myself, if we're going to build something and I want, to, I want to be proud of it and I want people to walk away in a better place than when they first came in. Yeah. And I said to myself, because I, I, I had coached a lot of people one to one at that stage and I've done like pretty similar stuff in terms of like, going, remember I coached a guy Oakley who went from 6K to 30K in six and a half weeks. Same lead, same offer, same everything. Go look at my pages there about two years ago. Anyway, no, about a year and a half ago. Um, I said to myself, okay, how do, I, how do I replicate the same 
results, testimonials, the same everything, but do it at a bigger capacity, but not lose that personalization and that personal touch and make sure that I'm still in the trenches with people. And I wrote it all out in a, in a pen. I wrote it all out in a piece of paper with pencil at the pool. Um, it was like at this spa. And that was the blueprint. That's what it was. And the top of the fucking the sheet was keep fucking people accountable. And because it's really important because you hit the nail on the head. I spoke to a guy today. He was like, I get to 12K in the month and then I pull back. So I was like, okay, so you're at least leaving double on the table. Now. He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, I guess to the 10th, 12th, 15th of the month, you've hit 10, 12K and then you stop working. So what does that mean? means you at least leave double on the table at the level that you're at right now. He's like, fuck, shit. I was like, well, <laughs> that's up to you, my friend. But I can coach and I can train you, but you got to be able to turn up, which is the important part. And, and the other side of it as well, Adam, is there's only so much that people can do for you until you're willing and wanting to do it yourself. I can't make you train. You know, and as I said to you guys the other day, the investment that you've invested is only going to give you access. People always have this misconception that, oh, well, I invested with you. No, you invested to have the access to me. <laughs> it's a different mindset. It's a different understanding. You, you invested to have the access to learn. You don't buy the education. You learn the education. And that's something that I'm sure you've done your whole life is learn things. But now you're learning things that have a dramatic impact on obviously what you're doing on a daily basis, you know? Yeah. I don't like it when people invest into something and it doesn't work out and then they kind of blame the, the coach when they didn't really put in the work. It's like you're trying to buy a gym membership, right? And then you expect to be six-pack abs shredded when you're not even doing anything. You just bought the membership. Yeah. See, the problem the that, that you put the I have in. with that is this, right? We have everything tracked anyway, so you can never yeah. blame me. Yeah, because <laughs> I can just basically take up the spreadsheet and I'd say you signed up for X. This is what you've actually attended. You've actually attended nine percent out of a hundred. I have it all. It's all in a spreadsheet. Like it's everywhere. So we everything, as you know, it's completely tracked from top to bottom. So there's never going to be a situation where someone picks up the phone or goes on on live and say, "Hey, I invested with Bill and I didn't do any work." And I'm going to be like, "Oh, right, that's interesting. Let me just share my screen." This is where you are. This is what you've done. And this is what the outcome should be of a 9% ROI. <laughs> so yeah. that's why people feel that they can blame people because they're not willing to take the accountability on themselves. You know, and that's really important because if you don't, then nothing will ever work. You know, you'll always chase a, a shiny object, as they say. What's the goal moving forward over the next couple of months? Because you have another five months. So sky's the limit now, my friend. Yeah. What do you want to do? What's the plan? Uh... Just keep pushing. I want to hit like half a million commissions in one year. I think that would be a pretty, pretty hefty goal. Okay. Um, and just build from there. Yeah. Put all that into trading, my Asian roots. And then just <laughs> what are you, what are you trading? I what trade you? options. Options. I trade options. Yeah. So, and I actually, I, am, I did really well in crypto too. So I got in in like 2019 before the huge bull run. So I made like a crap ton of money on that. I was just about to say it. Yeah. What's crypto at at the moment? It's starting to make a revival, I saw. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. What are you what are you buying without going too heavy into it? Obviously the big ones, big The big ones, yeah. Yeah. It's big yeah, ones at the option. moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Options is um is an interesting thing. I'll tell you a good story about options. So we were we used to run this, we used to run this, um we used to run the sales for one of one of the top guys. Uh I don't know do you know his name? His name is Tay Sweat. Tay Sweat. Sounds familiar. Yeah. He's like six foot three. He lives over in Puerto Rico. Black guy with dreadlocks. Uh, well, he did at the time. And uh, really, really educated guy. Like, done really well for himself. So we started doing the sales for him. And, you know, I listened to a podcast. And uh, he was talking about this option stuff. And I was like, hmm. Don't really know a whole lot about it. I know stocks and stuff. But I didn't know a whole lot about options. So I bought the course and stuff like that. And um, threw a lot of money in on the stock. And the thing just tanked. 
I mean, like went from 140 down to like less than $15 a share. I mean, tanked. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. I don't fuck with anything other than property and sales now. Because that's what I do. It's what I know. It's who I, it's, it's like, it's what I'm about. You know what I mean? So there's loads of different ways, you know, to make wealth and build wealth and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that I've always learned is this. If you don't have a way to constantly turn on the tap, you're going to be playing with stale water. What I mean by that, Adam, is you have a, a system and a, a structure right now that you can take as much flow as you possibly can and you can put it into as much as you possibly need to. There's a big difference between putting 10 grand a month into stocks and putting a grand. Because if you're working a nine to five, you could put a thousand in a month, give or take. You work in sales, you can put 10 times that in. So you're going to get 10x the return, yeah? In far less of the time. So your, your ROI on that is going to be far greater than anyone else because you have a money machine that ultimately prints you money and it's not a money machine, it's your skill. And it's something that you can carry around with you forever and always. It's like riding a bike. Yeah? Because it's just there now. You just have it. And it doesn't matter. You can go offer to offer to offer to offer and all the way back around. But you still have your skill. But now you all understand where to go to improve your skill over and over and over again. You know what I mean? And that's the key. But you've, all, you've done that only because you've backed yourself only because you overcome your own fear only because you allowed yourself to actually go into a position where you're uncertain on things and that journey has put you through all the way to where you are now you know so massive kudos to you buddy um what would you what would you feel would be the right thing to say to somebody that is in a position where you were at the end of the day um, you just got to do the work and put that step forward. Like, don't let the fear consume you. Just just put your head down, do the work, because that's what needs to be done in order to get you to where you want to go. And at the end of the day, I, I don't know, like, you know, where your viewers are, but if you do, like, invest into yourself, like, in, or, in sort of any skills, education, all that stuff, it's a tax write-off, and you're going to get the money back tenfold anyways. You're <laughs> investing into yourself. It, it is a tax write-off. Yeah, it's a tax write-off. I mean, you're, you're saving money and you're going to be making a crap ton of money and you're going to be investing in yourself into a skill that you're going to have forever. Like, no one can take this away from you, right? Like, like you know, speaking a different if, language. Yeah, if you're an employee, you can get fired and then you have to, like, find a different industry, whatever. Like, like everyone always needs sales. Like, it's what runs this entire world. Right. It runs all the businesses. Like, we're the most important people, like, to bring in the revenue. Perfect. And we're always in demand. So always. if you're not like always investing into your skills, if you're not always like trying to get better, like at the end of the day, like you're dying, you're not improving. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing as like, oh, I'm happy. I'm content with where I'm at. I'm willing to settle. That just means like you're going backwards. Yeah. doesn't even make sense. Yeah. doesn't even make sense. Actually, um, I'll leave you with this. Someone messaged me the other day and they were like, are you worried about AI? I was like, no. They're like, why? It's going to come and take your jobs. And I was like, no, it's going to come and take your job. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? I was like, because you're like at the bottom of the food chain, my friend. Like anyone that's making less than 5K a month, 7K a month, like you're toast. Because AI is going to come in and wipe you guys out. I guarantee it. Sellers, DM, like sellers, triagers, all of that component. If you're not at the top, guys, and I mean like in the top, top three in your company, you're finished. Like you're going to have a very, very hard time. A friend of mine actually took out all his triagers, took out all his DM setters and took out all his setters in terms of um, getting people to show up to the call. All AI now. He took out six pay, pay slips out of the company for £1,500 a month. He took out six... Uh, six incomes out of his company he's saving himself uh i think to get a base and stuff like that so let's say he was saving himself 2k a person that's 12k 
all the way down to 1500 bucks. That's what I'm saying to you. And as more and more and more uh, developers see that type of ROI, they'll just keep doing it. You think of like, um, you think uh, chat GPT and all that kind of shit. I haven't even played around with it, to be quite honest. I just don't have time. Um, if you think of all that, like that's really innovative. What's going to be like in six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months? How advanced is it going to be? You're Asian. You should tell me. How advanced is it going to be in 24 months? What? Pretty advanced. Especially we have a team of Asians building it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And that, and I can, so I'm not fearful of that because at the end of the day, um, it's only going to take out the low hanging fruit. It's only going to take out the people that, you know, can be repeatable. It's only going to take out people that are in a position where, um, you know, it's a, it's a repeatable skill. In, in, the, in the interaction that you and I do, where we have to potentially overcome three, four, five different objections, AI ain't doing that for years, guys. Yeah, no one wants to talk to a robot no. when conveying their feelings. No, what? correct. You end up playing the eye robot part. Uh, but if you're in that, like, you know, DM position, you're in a setter position, you're in a low hanging fruit position, they'll just take you all out, you know, and that's just the reality of it, unfortunately. So it's your skill. It's your skill that ultimately would mean whether you're on top or whether you're in the bottom. And if you're in, the end then you're in trouble but adam i appreciate you buddy i know you were nervous coming in here i know you're nervous to speak in front of everyone i don't know why because when you do what you've done you shouldn't be nervous you should be proud and you should be screaming from the rafters as they say but i'm i'm really impressed with you i'm really impressed with your work rate i'm really impressed with your diligence in terms of wanting to get better and wanting to develop and wanting to keep pushing most people when they hit the numbers that you hit buddy they pull back you said to me, I want to get to half a mil, which is, which is a big, massive number. But it'll take a little bit of time. But it's a mountain, you know. But if you don't take the left foot in front of the right foot, then it's all a waste of time. You're just always looking up at it. And that's just the reality. So kudos to you, buddy. I appreciate you. Keep training. Keep developing. Keep pushing on. And uh, if any of you want to have a conversation in regards what Adam's done, what we do, how it will work for you, just let me know. We're always here. Shoot me a DM. Get in the, you know, the Facebook group, the community. Um, it's in my cover photo. I go live in there a couple of times a month. No, a couple of times a week. Apologies. We go through different trainings and stuff like that where we can help you uh, literally for free until you're in a position where you want to pay me. No bullshit. Um, we have all... <laughs> I was talking to my marketing uh, uh CMO the other day, uh, I was saying to him, let's just not like do the shit that everyone else does. Let's just be obvious with people. Hey, you're on this page. This is a VSL. You know, I'm not going to insult you and thinking that I'm going to persuade you to do something that you don't want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you 150,000 million fucking testimonials and then you'll make a decision based whether you want to invest or not. So I'm like, I'm like completely the opposite. Now I'm like, just like, Let's just be obvious with people and let's leave them make up their own decision. You know, let's not try and 50% off this masterclass and all this bullshit. You're like, just be obvious and be genuine with people and let them make a conscious decision based on the results that you've got for other people, you know. But if you want to have that conversation, guys, if you want to do what Adam's done, you want to make a tremendous amount of money, guys, you want to take yourself out and put yourself in a position where you don't worry about AI, you don't worry about recession, you don't worry about getting let go of your jobs, and you have a skill that ultimately produces every single day, come and let me know. We can do it for you too. All right, Adam, I appreciate you. Go make some money, get some deals. Thank you, Bill. All right, buddy. See ya. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.